How's everybody doing? Thanks for being here. Um, obviously a disappointing loss this past weekend uh, on homecoming uh, versus South Florida. Um, you know, just uh, in general, uh, certainly we had, uh, you know, a lot of high expectations going into the ball game. I know that uh, a lot of our fans did too. Uh, we encountered a, an extremely talented uh, group from South Florida that played uh, very, very well on Saturday. Um, I thought they did uh, an outstanding job, both sides of the football, um, you know, with, uh, with their scheme. Uh, I thought their, their players played at a high level. Uh, and we really struggled against, uh, you know, their speed and some of the things that they were doing there. So um, we had plenty of missed opportunities. Uh, certainly the game could not have started off better. Uh, you know, what, a, what an incredible moment there, uh, opening kickoff, 100-yard uh, touchdown return by Tyler Sneed and the kickoff return unit. Uh, really excited about that group uh, and their continued improvement. Uh, we've been working very, very hard on that uh, all throughout the year. Um, and, and, you know, another uh, big play by our special teams, which we've had several of those uh, throughout the season. Uh, but what a great way to start the day. Um, you know, from there, um, you know, I thought the, you know, maybe one of the big turning points in the ball game was at 7-7, and we'd driven the ball down um, eight-yard line, uh, hopefully getting ready to get seven. I felt, you know, pretty confident we were going to get at least three uh, and turn the ball over right there. Uh, was really tough. Um, you know, our defense did not respond the way, um, you know, I expect them to, uh, the way we want them to, because right there is where you got to bow your back. Uh, you got to try to get the ball back for, for the offense. Um, and uh, we allowed a, a, a scoring drive right there. And I thought that was really a critical point in the ball game. Um, you know, there were some bright spots on the day, uh, but uh, obviously we all are disappointed in the loss. Uh, I thought the kids came in Sunday. Uh, and, you know, the team meeting, you could sense all of their disappointment. Uh, and I simply asked them some questions. Uh, why were they disappointed? Because they expected to win. You know, what, why didn't we win? You know, because of unforced errors that we created, because of some, some errors that we made because of what South Florida was doing. Uh, but a, a lot of things that we control uh, could have made a difference in that ball game. You know, what, what do we do about that now? And we go back to work. Uh, I thought they had a, a great attitude at practice Sunday night. I uh, thought we had really good effort. Um, you know, it, it, I would be disappointed if we don't have the same thing today. And the thing I'll go in there and tell them today is, you know, we have a very good Cincinnati football team coming in here. You know, one of the top teams in the country, a complete program from top to bottom. Uh, you know, one that, uh, you know, wins by doing things right. Uh, by being sound fundamentally in all three phases, by taking advantage of mistakes that opponents make, and by not making critical mistakes that uh, beat themselves. And uh, you see, we have a great challenge this weekend, but what a great opportunity. You know, what a great opportunity to go out and compete. Uh, and, you know, the, the process is not going to change. Um, you know, we're going to have a great practice today. I promise you the coaches have been hard at work since uh, Sunday morning. Uh, with uh, preparing a game plan for Cincinnati, uh, and we will have uh, you know we'll have good uh, you know effort and uh, enthusiasm at practice today, and I expect us to be prepared to play at a high level on Saturday. So, questions about uh, South Florida or Cincinnati? Coach, did you uh, sense that um, a lot of this is just mental at this point, and you were in really good positions to, to score points in a lot of positions, and, and, and they just Lost my mental there a bit Well, you know, I think uh, I think there's definitely some mental. Um, I think that there's uh, some experience. Um, you know, certainly Demetrius is continuing to improve each week, um, but uh, you know, got to do a good job there. You know, uh, deep in the red zone with you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna spin on the defender, you've got to tuck the ball tight to your chest and get it high. You know, it's a fundamental that, uh, you know, that you got, you got to rep and you got to learn. Uh, you know, uh, he's continuing to get better, and I think that was a painful moment for him. Um, but he will, be, he will be motivated to be better the next time he's in that situation. And I think you could just go and you could check the box for any of those situations you're talking about, and that's, that's about the way you could surmise it. Coach, uh, Aaron went down with injury. It looked pretty serious. Can you, can you have an update on this side? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, Aaron tore his ACL. 
uh, he'll have surgery uh, late this week. Uh, he's done for the year. Um, uh, he and I um, had a talk Sunday night. Uh, you know, his, his family was here this weekend. Um, you know, they've, they've been very supportive with him. You know, we'll help him through that rehab, be excited to have him back next year. Um, but that was a tough blow. You know, he, was, he had uh, you know, played very well against Central Florida um, and was really starting to come around. So it's, uh, you know, it's disappointing for all of us to see him have his season come to an end. Hey, we, we asked about the tight end position, some kind of throughout the year. Um, and it's always about potential and that type of thing. Right. Jeremy Lewis actually gets in the end zone. Do you think yeah. that was a confidence boost or anything for that? Oh, was out. You know, that's. I was, I was talking to someone this morning, just, you know, I, I still remember my first college touchdown. And, and it's just that, that moment you'll never forget. And Jeremy will never forget that catch. Uh, Brian will never forget that throw. Uh, and it's, it, it's got to give you confidence. It's certainly something that, uh, you know, we see it in practice. Uh, you know, there's a reason why, you know, when we got here, he'd been recruited as a defensive player. You know, but you watch his senior senior year in high school, his uh, film there, and then you watch him play basketball his senior year, and he obviously is a guy that has a lot of athleticism, uh, very good ball skills, uh, and he's, he's certainly we got to develop him, but I think he can develop into a guy that uh, is very uh, multi-dimensional. You know, a guy that you can split out, a guy that you can play in the backfield, a guy that you can play you know in a wing position or on the line. Uh, because he can do so many things. You know, he's a good athlete. He can block in space. Uh, he's going to be big enough and sturdy enough to be an inline blocker. And just on that play right there, I mean, that was a contested catch that he made. I mean, the defender was right on him uh, and had his hand kind of up between Jeremy's arms. But Jeremy was able to go up and high point the football and come down, uh, you know, with a tough catch in the end zone for his first college touchdown. So it has to give him confidence. It shows, you know, a flash of what he can be. True freshman, first semester in college. Uh, so excited that he's part of our program. Coach, Brian Gagg got some valuable in-game reps uh, last game. Is the plan to get him some more valuable reps like that for the rep with four games to go? Or do you play to redshirt him? Like, obviously, you know the rules for redshirt. He can play four games. He's played one. What's the situation with him for the rest of the season? Well, th we're trying to redshirt him, yes. Um, I think any time we can get him some uh, experience, it's uh, something we want to do. Uh, I thought he handled it pretty well for his first college experience. He had two drives. Uh, obviously, he was able to get a scoring drive on the second one. But you know, when when we evaluate it, you evaluate what's the play call. You know, certainly the quarterback has responsibility for some pre-snap decisions as well as some decisions within the play. And I thought for the most part, he did a really good job with his decision making and you know distributing the football where it was supposed to go during his time in the game Saturday night. So we'll try to continue to get him some experience uh, you know, over the, the span of the rest of the regular season. Coach, you talked about tackling after the game. What did you see on film, and, and how do you get that thing corrected? Well, I think, uh, number one, I saw some really good athletes uh, on the other side uh, that are difficult to tackle in the open field. Uh, we've got to continue to work on uh, that and improve on that. Uh, the thing is, you can't hesitate when you're trying to make an open field tackle. If you hesitate and get on your heels any, you're done. Uh, and so our thing has always been to attack with proper leverage and take your shot. Uh, it's something that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to a degree to simulate in practice because, you know, you can't go out and live tackle every day in practice. Uh, you won't have any running backs and receivers left. Um, you know, so you've got to be able to use our, our thud tackling technique. So it's got to be a very aggressive thud tackling technique, which is what we try to teach. Uh, but we got to be committed to it every day. We got to work on it uh, all throughout the uh, week uh, and season. And it's a cumulative thing. You know, you don't turn from a, from a poor tackler to a great tackler overnight. It's something that you got to commit to habitually uh, and develop. Uh, some of it is ability. Uh, a lot of it probably is ability, but some of it is habits. Um, and we just cannot be hesitant on our habits. We, we've got to be extremely aggressive uh, in our tackling. Head up, attack the proper leverage, and do not hesitate. Take your shot. We uh, had a chance to talk to the commissioner who was in town, and he uh, talked about obviously going 11 members right. to play the championship. In, in, in a couple of years, would you, or just in a perfect world, would you rather there be divisions, you know, in the conference or? I'm worried about East Carolina football. 
that's it. You know, whatever the rest of it, whatever. You know, I, I hope that we're in a position to be in that championship game in a few years. Uh, when you look at uh, Cincinnati, especially in the AAC East, and they kind of have that physical blue collar yeah. kind of approach that obviously you want here to talk about it. Is that is this the type of program maybe that you can make comparison to what you want to be in a long term type of thing? There's no doubt. I mean, I, I think Luke has done a great job with the program. Uh, you can see a, a, a definitive plan uh, and a certain style of play. Uh, and I think that uh, he's done a great job developing the team. You know, obviously, you know, they're going to run a different defensive scheme than we're running right now. You know, they run a different offensive scheme than we're running right now. But he, still, the style of play is how you want to play. You know, I don't care if you're in the spread or if you're in the, you know, pro eye, if you're in the wishbone. You know, the style of play of good hard-nosed football is a team that can run the football, they can stop the run, they're great on special teams. They're very effective throwing the football. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're sound fundamentally. All their players are very aggressive. Um, and, you know, he's created that culture there. And so it, it is very much a, a look at how we want to play here. Um, you know, it didn't happen there overnight. Uh, he's had to work very hard at, hard at it since he got the job. Uh, it is something that we're very dedicated to and working hard in the middle of right now. Coach, I know you touched on this a little bit with Cincinnati being so rounded uh, in offense, defense, and special teams. Is there something really that specifically that stands out about them that is something you're really going to have to key on? I, I think it, I think you could take it by each you know side of the ball right there. They don't make a lot of mistakes. You know, you're going to have to be very disciplined in what you do. Um, you're going to have to be very sound. Uh, we're going to have to play uh, together. We're going to have to play very hard. We're going to have to be very physical. Uh, we're going to have to be all the things we talk about being almost every week uh, because if you don't, they're not going to give you the ball game. Um, I think the quarterback is highly underrated. Uh, I think he's one of the better – Ritter is one of the better quarterbacks we faced this year. Uh, does a good job with ball distribution, uh, accurate throws, has good arm strength, uh, has good height in the pocket he can see. Um, is a much better runner than I think he probably gets credit for. I think he's a legitimate threat in the run game as well as on the quarterback scrambles. Um, and, you know, he is the unquestioned leader of that offense. I mean, he does a great job directing it. So I think that, you know, that's one thing we're going to have to do a good job with him, accounting for him both not only in the passing game but in the run game as well. Coach, you talked about the D line with Edge Stone this year. It seems like Alex has played almost every snap. I mean, what, He's played a lot. As an interior lineman, what has he meant to, to your program uh, playing that much? I mean, I think just Alex Turner in general uh, is he's an example of what we want in our program. Uh, he's, he's a solid character person off the field, he's solid academically in the classroom. And then on the field, I never have to question his effort, I never have to question. Uh, he, he has minimal missed assignments. You know, he is going to know what to do uh, with, every, with every call. He's going to be locked into every snap. Uh, he plays with toughness, pad level. Uh, really, he makes himself uh, as good a player as he can be given his God-given potential. I mean, I think he's one of those guys you look at, he has maximized his God-given potential, which that's what you want to do as a player. So um, I think that steadiness uh, you know, on the defensive line is important not only for, you know, that position and our, our defensive line group, but also for our entire defensive unit. Looking at last Saturday, uh, Miles Mayer started, at least and was there for the first part of that drive, over Xavier Smith, and then with Rand Sorker, um, did Bivens and Smith, did they kind of have to step up, or are some other guys like Barry and um, Devonta Harris maybe get a shot in that? Well, I think they're all going to get their shot. Uh, we need that group to play well. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a group that I think has some potential, uh, but I think they've got to play well. Uh, I did not think that group played particularly uh, well last Saturday, but they're not the only ones. But uh, they, they've got to, uh, you know, they, they've got to perform at a high level. They've all got an equal shot. Uh, and it's, it's kind of that way across the board right now, and it has been for the past several weeks. You've seen our... Uh, you know, our, our depth chart changed a little bit each week. Uh, and even though the depth chart comes out like that today, it's probably going to be different on Saturday because, you know, who starts the game Saturday and who gets the 
the most uh, reps on Saturday is going to be dictated by their performance this week in practice. Coach, what's your overall assessment of Holton's uh, progress and uh, his progression so far um, heading into the last few games here this season? You know, I think it's been uh, it's been up and down a little bit, and I don't say that negatively. I just say that uh, you know certainly he's had some games where he's played at a higher level. I think he's had some games where he's made a few mistakes. I think he's still um, a young quarterback that's developing in a new offense. Um, and I, th I think that he did some really good things on Saturday, and I think he made some, some mistakes Saturday that, uh, you know, were critical. Uh, you know, that's, that's part of that position. And I, I said it to him, I said it publicly, that, you know, that position gets criticized and critiqued more than any position on the field because, you know, every snap the, the play starts with the ball in his hands. Uh, and a lot, a lot of the, the success of, uh, you know, of our offense is predicated by the decision making there. So, um, you know, when he does things well, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be really highlighted. And when he makes a mistake, it's going to be really criticized. And so um, I think it's one of those things where he continues to push himself each week to improve. Uh, he continues to push himself each week to correct his mistakes. Um, the one thing I never have to doubt about him is his drive to be great. Uh, or his competitive spirit. You know, he's going he's gonna to push himself to be the very best um, each day he goes out on the field. Uh, and each game day, he is going to have the same high expectations for himself that I have for his performance. So um, that's kind of how I would evaluate him right now at this point in the season. Anything else? All right, thanks a lot. Looking forward to Saturday. Go Pirates.